In this video, we talk about the top 10 elements of a homepage. Hey, what's up? I'm Mark Terry Molini, and I'm all about achieving financial independence through real estate investing and online business. So if you're new to the channel and you're interested in becoming financial free for yourself, be sure to like and subscribe and you will not miss a thing. So when you're building a website, it can be a little overwhelming to know what exactly you put on the page. There's a lot of different possibilities. Uh, different combinations you can do and knowing exactly what to do is a little bit difficult and you never really know what's going to be you know the perfect combination because companies are always changing things on their website and you know they kind of find what works and stick with with that basically so it's hard for anybody to say what you specifically need but these are kind of the top um, things you'll see on home pages so going to go over this list. Uh, I'm going to go over each of them briefly. There's 10 of them here and then I'll kind of go to a few websites to show you a few examples um, in um, on actual websites. So the first one would be is you need a navigation for a home page. Usually a website has more than one page because if it's one page it's just a landing page and it's, it's focused on one particular thing which is usually sales. But this is a website so you're going to probably have different pages it could be you know your products or your services or about the company contact it's going to be different things so that's going to be the very top of the website um, so you're going to need a navigation the next one number two is going to be a header and a header is basically the top section of your website it's called uh, above the fold is what it is called um, the content above um, where it gets cut off on the screen. It's all the content kind of above and that's the header typically and it's going to be basically It needs to be a headline It needs to say what your company does or what you do or what you provide it needs to be very very clear don't use any kind of tricky words or or kind of I don't know anything vague it needs to be very very clear so people open the web page see it and know exactly what you provide uh, almost immediately so that's very important and then uh, beneath that a lot of people will put like a subheadline so they'll have like a big bold statement and then underneath, underneath that they'll have like a little blurb of text to go into a little bit more detail about what they do exactly or what they provide so that's number two and these are in no particular order uh, of importance these are just kind of the, the top ones that I see so Number three is a main call to action. So when you have your headline, your main headline, you have your subheadline, usually there's a big bold button right there. Like usually it's like front and center, or maybe it's um, kind of left aligned. And that is basically the company saying like, hey, you know, this is the preferred action that I would like the customer to take. Um, you know, it's a big bold button. So that you're going to need a call to action. And that kind of helps guide the the user um, in the direction that you know the company wants them to go basically that said if the, if the user does not want to click that button like let's say it's a purchase button or it's you know set an appointment or something but they don't want to do that you can put secondary calls to action and so basically what you want to do is put like your primary call to action probably a number of times as they scroll down the page repeat it and then maybe a little bit further down the page, you know, if they really don't want to don't want to click that button, you can out, offer a couple other options, um, just to give them the option to, you know, look at the product a little bit more, look into the services a little bit more, so they can get a better understanding. So that's going to be uh, the third is call to action. So number four I have here is supportive imagery, and this can include videos as well. So almost any website you go to, it's got like really nice images or illustrations or even videos. And that kind of, it's supportive to the text that's there. The text is most important because it's, you can communicate to your audience, but the pictures and the videos and the illustrations and stuff, that all supports that text and it helps, kind of helps clarify. And that's a really good place where, where videos come in because if, if you have a kind of a complicated product or service, um, just get, providing like a short one minute video that they can click on and watch that really, really helps a lot. So supportive uh, content is very important. Okay, another thing you're gonna probably wanna need um, on your website are the top benefits. And there's a, I wanna make a distinction here between features and benefits. Your product may have a lot of features, you know, maybe it's like really fast or, um, you know, whatever it may be, but you need to put 
benefits. Like why does this benefit the user? And that is a better stance as far as trying to actually sell your product. It can be more successful because you can list all the features in the world, but people aren't really going to care. They want to know why it benefits them. So make sure to put benefits um, of your products and services. Number six here is um, you want to feature your products and services. So if you have, you know, multiple products, you know, maybe you put a kind of few of the key products that you really want to push. Um, or if it's services, you can put kind of like your top services there. So people kind of know like, oh, this is kind of what they offer. And then if they want to look into more services, you might have a dedicated page for that. But kind of just present kind of the, the main um, top features and um, uh, of your products, basically. And number seven here is social proofing. And what that is, is it's basically feedback that you've gotten from customers that basically shows like, hey, you know, this product or this service like is really works. And you have customer feedback, there might be a little picture and quotes and a, a, a little short blurb of text. And that kind of just if you have multiple of them, it kind of shows, oh, hey, you know, this company is kind of legit. So it kind of proves that, you know, you um, are good at what you do, basically, or what you provide. So that's social proofing. Number eight I have here as a lead magnet. And what that is, is, you know, some, let's say somebody comes to your website and you have things that they can purchase and, and buy products or whatever it is, but they're not ready to purchase. They don't want to yet. Or maybe you have services and aren't ready to buy your services yet. You can give them a free offer of some kind. Maybe it's a digital download or maybe a special video, or maybe it's like a, um, a sequence of emails that they can receive on a specific topic they may be interested in. So what you can do is like have a little capture form. It could you basically just for them to put in their email, type in their email and boom, you have their contact information. So at that point, you can send them that, that free download or whatever it may be. And then from there, you can start sending out email uh, sequences to kind of um, get them to know, like, and trust you. Um, so they, they warm up to purchasing uh, your products and services. So that's important. Uh, number nine I have here is um, resources to learn more. So like I said, if they're not ready to buy, need to offer um, maybe some things on the page to um, kind of help them learn more about your, your products and services just as an option. Um, so that's something you can put in there as well. And number 10 I, hear, I have here is success indicators. And so you'll see, you'll see on a lot of websites, like you'll have like a bunch of logos of very large companies. And that's basically, it's another form of social proofing. Instead of being specific customers with quotes, it's companies that use their, their service or their products. So those are kind of the top 10 um, things we'll see. And we'll go over a, a few designs here um, or a few web pages so you can get an idea of, um, you know, kind of seeing these in action basically. So the first one we have here is Slack. And Slack is kind of a messaging platform, um, instant messaging. So I'll, I'll kind of go through quickly on each one here and kind of point out what I see. So here you have the, obviously the navigation. Uh, you have your calls to action up here, which is good. You have your headline, you have your sub headline, main call to action again. You have your um, supporting imagery here. And along with that, there's a video. So support a video as well. Um, here is the, um, success indicators that I mentioned earlier. So all the companies that they work with. Um, and then we kind of go into more um, kind of talking about the product or, or the service that they offer and what it can provide. A couple more videos. And this verbiage here is kind of tying in benefits as well. So it's like focus your time or simplify teamwork for everyone. So it's kind of like the words they're using um, kind of implies a benefit. And then they go into a little bit more detail with this text here. And again, supportive imagery. This is really good. They have like a, um, a simple one, two, three 
that kind of helps people kind of wrap their head around about around like how to use this product or service and making it seem simple um, is easier for people because you don't want them to think, oh, this is complicated and they just kind of um, brush it off and don't do it. You want to make it seem quick, easy, simple, no problem. So that's what this kind of one, two, three setup is here. And then they have kind of a area here where you can learn a little bit more. And they repeat the call to action down here. And here's your secondary call to action. And then a footer down here. So a footer is important as well. Another one here is Lemonade. So same idea, main header, navigation, subheading, main call to action. Um, they have a huge section here on social proofing. They're really trying to push the social proofing um, success indicators here again, um, kind of um, specifics on what they offer insurance on. And they kind of make it seem pretty simple on how to get started. There's a video, basically supportive imagery, kind of how it works so you get the idea of how it works. Um, a lot more um, success indicators. So yeah, that's that one. And then Fiverr here. So again, navigation, they have the header. Um, no subheader on this one. Um, or like supportive text, um, but like I said, these aren't, you won't find every single one of these on a web page. Uh, people will kind of pick and choose, but this is kind of what you see the most part, kind of, you know, these top 10 are found on a lot of web pages. Um, so this one does not have a subheading, but it has the success indicators, um, kind of helps you find the services that you need. Here are some of the benefits, you know, best budget, um, quality work, protected payments, 24 seven support. So they're using um, verbiage here that is, is um, um, worded in a way that makes it uh, sound like a benefit. So these are all benefits, basically, benefits section, um, you know, marketplaces where you can find services, they have a business section if you want to dive into that and a call to action for that specifically. Social proofing with a video. A little uh, online logo maker. So this is a tool. Tools are another great way to um, uh, basically capture leads. So let's say you're trying to um, gain leads for them to purchase your services later. If you offer a tool, that is a great way to say, hey, you know, put in your email, here's a free tool and people will sign up and then you have their contact and you can again start sending out emails to to build that know like and trust factor for future sales and then uh, other areas down here to um, kind of get inspired by by some of the work that's been done and then there's some guides down here if you want to learn more basically a learn more section and again a basically a repeat of the call to action at the top of the page and a footer. So these are all pretty similar. And um, as far as what they're, they're showing, you know, um, these are basically you'll, you'll see them any, any website you go to any good website, you'll see a lot of these elements um, to kind of help um, basically guide the user towards, you know, what they want, you know, whether it's sales or um, you know, reaching out and contacting them or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, but that's, that's the main idea is you want to think about the user coming to your homepage and guiding them towards the result that you would like. They may not take it, um, but you want to guide them in a certain direction and then offer maybe some other um, secondary things that they can do to learn more um, to kind of basically earn their trust over time. So those are the top 10 elements. So if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.